I am doing yet another start of a vlog. Maybe one day I'll make content that isn't vlogs, but right now that's what's working for me. So I'm just doing that. Um, I wanted to update you a bit on my reading because the last time I spoke with y'all, I had finished Careless. Um, I have gone ahead and also finished The Owls of the Eastern Ice, if I remember, um, by Jonathan Slott. And I ended up really liking this uh, from start to finish. I thought it was a really good, both introspective book in that, you know, you are following a PhD student as he, you know, begins his dissertation work and the struggle of finding funding, the struggle, in, the struggle of dealing with, you know, the different kind of like power dynamics in academia, which can be quite messed up, as well as just the struggle of doing this conservation work of you know, having limited resources, but really knowing the high stakes of it all, just because the river owls, you know, by the time he started, were already kind of endangered, especially as these logging countries were entering the area of, I think after listening to, to the entirety of it that I would not, um, would remember. Um, but you know, there's, the logging companies are becoming more and more present in this area that at one point was completely devoid of human life. So seeing, seeing him talk about this, just seeing the different like cultural context because it, you know, takes place in Russia. So of course there's a different cultural like lens that Jonathan has to navigate. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and I would definitely recommend it. So then I also have continued, it's in the room um, with my partner who's asleep right now. So I'm not going to show you, but I've continued to read uh, Rock and gays an untamed state i believe it's called i'm on part two now and if you don't know the premise of this book because i don't really know how much i've talked about it it follows this woman mirabelle as she is visiting her father um, in haiti he's a very well-known um, architect there and she gets kidnapped and she gets kidnapped for 13 days and the first part of the book you follow her as she's living through the kidnapping and you follow like how she changes as a person and part two which is where I am now is when you follow her when she uh, returns to her family and boy oh boy i should have known just because everything i've read from roxanne gay has been really brilliant but this has been such a like true to me book about how when you're in a traumatic situation that you're living day to day that you cannot get out of how you begin to separate from yourself in order to survive and I've never really read something that so delicately navigates this in spite of the violence that is happening on the page the nuance of it all um, I know that probably sounds silly but it really is remarkable especially when you consider that this is Roxane Gay's like debut novel like like she had written at the point where she wrote this she had written short form fiction but this was like the, the first like novel length and it's just really stunning it doesn't say too much but doesn't say too little like it it's interesting because sometimes with fiction that deals with trauma authors feel like they have to say a lot to allow readers ha have an experience trauma or at least the trauma that's in the, the book that type of trauma that they have to say a lot especially a lot about the characters in her state and um 
Roxane Gay doesn't really do that, and I, I really appreciate it. Um, I know but it seems probably a while that I'm still reading this because I've been reading it since last September. So then I have started, even though I should be finishing the sentence, which I am also still reading, it's here with the dust jacket off right now, but I've also started Creatures of Passage and I'm really enjoying it. I've never read anything by this uh, author, but she seems to have been really quite prolific from like, you know, at the start of the book where they tell you all the accolades. Then I vaguely do remember seeing Time of Locus. I feel like it came out a couple years ago. I'm enjoying it. It's it's interesting. Like I want to read to you a bit of the the passage. It's, it's taking me like a, um, a second to like orient myself in this new world because it both has aspects of myth but then is set in, in reality and set with like, you see a character struggling to cope with the death of her brother. Um, and so she keeps flashing backwards and forwards about like their own internal lore, but also the book cites like, cause the character is named after the sister of Osiris, Nephritus, um, who ser fairies lost souls, right? So it has like, it plays a lot, anywho. I'm going to stop babbling. <laughs> Let me read to you. Like This is like right at the start, so I don't think it's, it spoils. And that trigger warning for um, death and uh, imagining kind of, 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 of a corpse. One of her legs was going numb, and she tried to reposition herself against the shabby seat cushions. She rubbed the mangled flesh of her half finger. They were born holding hands, she and her brother, their fingers conjoined at the pointer, and they would have lived their entire lives that way if they hadn't been cut apart soon after they took their first breath. It's all gone now, she thought. The sea islands were far, far away, a past that lay underwater. Every bit of that long-ago life was lodged in the tubings of ancient coral reefs, disintegrating beneath the verges of lives once lived, folding into the happenings of other happenings. Many years later, gated communities and resorts and timeshare flats would be built on top of the old black family cemeteries and bank seized properties of the Gola lands, and the few living who remained there would be unwitting stars of a sort of human natural preserve where tourists came to smile and point as if looking at the last of a species. But Nephritus had no way of knowing this as she sat in her apartment in the southeast quadrant. What she knew was that now there was only the Washington Navy Yard and boiling Air Force Base. Now there were overgrown lots and houses that were no longer homes. Now people walked the streets as the shadows themselves, joining the ghost tribes of the Nako Chuck tank Indians, preachers of passage from one generation to the next. Her, ha her half finger throbbed harder still, and once more she was reminded of how life could begin and how it could end. Now, don't you think that that is really w well written? It's like a start of just that image, the idea of her brother, um, and then just the imagery. I mean, it's not like a happy imagery, right? But the imagery of um, the gentrification of Go the Gola Island and like, you know, just of all of it. And then the like creatures of passage, like how we're all creatures of passage, really. Um, but especially how, you know, folks are made to be creatures of passage as well it's yeah i don't know but i'm i'm really intrigued by it um and plan to to carry on um i am going to finish my mom's blanket this weekend but i also have been fussing around and like I have, I'm not even following a pattern, so I don't know how I, like, manage to guesstimate the, like, circumference, more or less. It's not, like, perfect of, like, my head. It's a little bit bigger than, like, a regular collar, but, like, that's not terrible. 
so that's something and yeah still living the scrunchy life because i refuse to let lulu swallow another elastic because <laughs> he did that on christmas which resulted in like lulu almost passing it was like the wildest of times um but everything's okay now so that's all that matters um so yeah i'm going to be doing some tidying today i'm going to um also be listening to an audiobook i'm not really sure which audiobook yet um there's a lot of really good stuff through the library um I'll either, I have a couple, so I have The Book Wanderers by Anna James, she was a booktuber at one point, um, I have Black Love Matters by Jessica P. Pride, which I'm really interested in, because it talks about, um, black romance, and just, like, obviously the importance of, like, not only having stories about black folks that are, like, upsetting, <laughs> but, like, joyful stories, and obviously way more, I'm, like, talking about something I haven't read, so... Um, and then there's The Boy with a Bird in His Chest by Emmy Lund. That one really sounds intriguing to me. Ain't Burned All, Br Ain't Burned All the Bright by Jason Reynolds. Obviously, Jason Reynolds, if you don't know, is one of my favorite writers, like, of all time. Um, A Snake Falls from Earth by Darcy Little Badger. Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valenti. Um, and Oh Beautiful by Jung... Young, you know, Jung Young wrote uh, Shelter quite a few years ago, and I don't know if it's just because I've been missing from um, BookTube, but I didn't realize that she wrote a new book, so that, that's that been something. Sorry that I'm always looking exhausted in all these, like, vlog footages. I promise you that I'm, like, not a mess that I have, like, <laughs> yeah, but I apologize. Anywho, um, that is that. I'm going to try to get some work done. I'm going to try to sit outside a bit today as well. Um, because it's supposed to be a lovely day before it snows. So you'll have more patio footage, <laughs> as I always do. Well, you're not sick of seeing the mountain range. I never am, but who knows. Uh-oh. Jerry's upset. So I have to go, but um, talk to y'all in another clip soon. Jer, were you yelling to go outside? Were you yelling because you want to go on the patio? Sir, can you let the folks know? Yeah? <laughs> were you? You're trying to behave because you know the camera's eye on ya. Hey y'all, so I wanted to go ahead and update you. Um, I've been doing some chores and I listened to two very short audiobooks while doing that. So the first one was the newer Jason Reynolds book. It was a collaboration he did with the artist Jason Griffin. Um, I want to get a copy of the physical book to look at the artwork because of course the audio doesn't have that. Um, but the audiobook was like really well done. It has like two takes reading the same piece that Jason Reynolds wrote. The first take is read by Jason Reynolds and the second take is done by a full cast um, which includes Niall Bullock, Tatum Marilyn Hall, Jaquan J. Kelly, Dupree Owens, um, and I really enjoyed both iterations. I always really love hearing things in Jason Reynolds' voice just because, you know, I like listening to interviews and things like that. Um, so I really enjoyed, like, the first take especially. Um, but the poem basically follows Jason Reynolds during the start of the pandemic in 2020, especially in the summer um, where the Black Lives Matter movement um kind of had an uptick as far uptick as far as like general society and like news um and like when all the protests were happening um a lot of participation there so you follow um him and his family as 
there, they keep on hearing about this. And at the same time, um, his father was ill. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. Um, like I said, I really would love to see the artwork, especially because after the first two takes of the poem reading, um, there and just their collaboration on that. So I, I enjoyed it. Um, then the secondary audiobook that I listened to was a novella by Catherine M. Valenti. I quite like Valenti's work. Um, the Girl that Circumnavigated Fairyland, um, as well as, um, I have another one of her books on my shelves. Um, that's kind of like a reimagined Roaring Twenties. I've read quite a bit of her stuff and I've enjoyed it. This novella, unfortunately, really didn't work for me too much. What was the name? Something Comfort Apples? Comfort Me with Apples. So this is a book that, or novella that came out last year. It got quite a bit of hype, I think, because I'm pretty sure it was like on the Goodreads top horror books. And the book follows this woman Sophia, who lives in this ideal society called Ambrosia. It has a very, like, a lot of folks compare it to Stepford Wife's type of feeling to it. Um, but you can tell very early on that things aren't very, things aren't completely normal with this society. But we don't know why or what. And we know that Sophia herself seems to only be able to feel certain things to act in certain ways and she is very much the quote-unquote perfect wife um and the story ends up being a retelling of something i'm not going to really be able to say what without spoiling the book so i'm just going to leave it like that and i thought it was okay i thought that for such a short text, it it almost tries to bite off too much than what you can actually feasibly do in, in like such a short format book. Um, I thought that once we found out what was really going on in this um, world that, you know, there was not much more that could be said that could be done. I I don't know, it really just did not, not work for me as a reader. Um, but I know that there are plenty of people, like if you even type in Come For Me With Apples, because I wanted to hear some other folks' thoughts, like some of the first um, book reviews that will pop up will be very positive. So, you know, that's just me. <laughs> I just didn't really enjoy listening to it as much as I would have hoped. Um, so I think that as far as like listening while doing chores, I might probably switch to a middle grade um, just to change kind of my my reading mood. But I also hope to just continue my physical readings of Creatures of Passage, The Sentence. And I also, because I, I was not lying when I said I cannot finish a single book. I just keep picking up more books. <laughs> um I also picked up The Bread the Devil Needs, and oh my lord, it just opens up, and we're in, in a domestic abuse situation, but it's, you know, first couple of pages are intriguing, let's, but yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I will keep on keeping on and let you know what happens. Hey y'all, so I wanted to update you a bit. It is Saturday. I haven't really done much reading today, but since I last spoke to you, I finished two books um, that I finished on audio. The first is one that I've been reading since February that y'all know about, John Crow's Devil by Marlon James. I ended up really liking this. It did end up being like this critique on not religion itself, but the way how like like religion can get used to manipulate folks. Um, and, you know, I ended up continuing to like to watch the struggle between the apostle and the preacher and then just the dialogue that came from there. Um, and I had restarted it when I started listening to 
to in on audio and it's narrated by Robin Miles who's one of my favorite um, audiobook narrators as well um, and in the rereading I really enjoyed the two main female protagonists in this Lucinda and the uh, widow green green something and yeah it was just interesting to see how the apostle was able to manipulate Billy Gabia, the town, to follow his whims under the guise of him being an agent of God. So that was really interesting. I think that there was a lot of really cool commentary in here, and it's the type of book that I probably want to revisit and see if I can even garner more from this. And it's wild to, I heard somewhere that this was like, um, rejected like 60 something times before it actually got published so that kind of shows you especially now when you look at Marlon Jane's like writing like career like how much he's like flourished and how wonderful his writing is it's it's really cool that he kept on pers persevering until he um, got published um, and I still think that you know you can tell that as an early work that this you know he was trying somewhat to appeal to the publishing world just because it feels less Marlon Jeansy than some of his later works but all in all I really enjoyed this. Then the other book that I listened to on audio is the um, I think it's the sixth installment in the Wayward, Wayward Children series no, seventh. <laughs> um, and it's called Where the Drown Girls Go by Shonan McGear. And in this particular installment, we follow Kira. Um, and Kira has recently returned from another misadventure that the children uh, went to on this book. I have the fifth and sixth books with me, but not the seventh because it's with Caitlin in the bedroom. I'm not going to disturb her. Um, so this is the fifth book and come tumbling down. Uh, Kira has some misadventures that uh, result in her wanting to kind of forget that she ever went through a door. And this leads her to go to this other school that's different um, from the main school that we've read about you know, throughout the series, Eleanor West's Home for Children. Uh, she chooses to go to Whitethorn Institute, and Whitethorn Institute is very different from um, Mrs. Eleanor's School for Wayward Children because the whole point of Whitethorn is for the children to forget that they ever went through a door and to completely um, deny any experience with any sort of other fairy land type of world and I really enjoyed it it was really cool to see another school and to kind of understand the motivations behind that because there are the little like kind of not plot twist but the reveal at the end um was interesting and I feel like it will lead to further um books and yeah I really enjoyed it. I think that's probably where the drowned girls is the one I've enjoyed the most since the one before come tumbling down the fourth book because that's one of my favorite ones I enjoyed the the um sixth one which is in a real bad shape please don't judge me um but um yeah I just really enjoyed the fourth and the seventh one apparently so um, outside of that, I've kept on reading the sentence, which I have here. I'm really enjoying it. It's still just as like meta and refers to a bunch of different books. And I just like the the interactions between the two, um, not the two characters, the characters. Um, I like to see the way that the step kind of daughter character and our main protagonist have been interacting. Um, the passages are really beautiful and poetic there was one that I wanted to read to y'all but I don't know if I'll be able to find it now because it was earlier I was reading it um oh here it is it's so the main protagonist she works at a bookstore and in this part of the book she's talking about how with the ease of self-publishing she finds like a bunch of um 
self-published books in the shelves. Um, so here we go. The first snow of the new year lifted my burdensome thoughts. The snow brightened and cleaned and filled the air with oxygen. I breathed euphoria all day to work. I was cheerful even though it was inventory day. And there would be cowbirds. That's what I call the unexpected bur books that we find here and there in the store during inventory. Throughout the year, we are busy feeding the cash register and we do not notice when people sneak their books onto ourselves. Sadly, we can't accept these books, home-copied, self-published, even occasionally handwritten, because they are logistical nightmares tangling our system. I suppose there are also cowbirds, because we are providing them expensive shelf space and nurturing them for free, but the authors leave their works as gifts. I like presents. Because it's so much easier to digitally self-publish now, the cowbirds increase every year. Cold from the shelves, they fill a box. Our store is so tiny that it amazes me there are so many of them. I feel for them. Kaku Ethel Scribbine. Who doesn't have a book in them? These books are signs of life. The opposite, I thought, of the book buried in my yard. Just really enjoyed that. Um... So yeah, that is basically it for reading. I'm hoping to read more of the sentence and then I was thinking about picking up potentially um, a different audiobook to listen to while I am knitting. I have quite a few that I have out from the library to pick from. So I don't know if I'll do a middle grade, if I'll do a nonfiction memoir. I just don't know, so we'll see. Um, or I could read a physically like light book it's easier to turn the pages like another one from the woman's prize like I have this sorrows and bliss that a lot of folks have liked that is physically light and then the last thing I'll say is well the last two things I'll say is I am currently working on making a beanie knitting wise I'm not really sure about how it's turning out right now because I made a mistake and so the um the stitch type isn't the same when you turn it up, which I shouldn't have done, but, oh lord, I look ridiculous, but yeah, so it's coming along. The first time I tried to do this, it definitely did not fit my head at all, <laughs> so I had to start over, um, but we'll see how that comes about, <laughs> and I also got this really pretty yarn to make socks with. It's like this really pretty speckledy rainbowy colors. So that is that. And I will say more when I have more. Hey folks, I haven't done this in a while, but we're going to do an update while I walk during my lunch break. So I did finish one more audiobook uh, last weekend. Um, it was a middle grade text, Macy Chin's Last Chance. Um, written by Lisa Yi and narrated by, I want to say, I'm not really sure, but I will include it here because I can't remember. Um, but the narration was really good. And you follow a little girl, Macy, who at the start of the novel, um, her and her mom travel from L.A., back to a small town called Last Chance in Milling, Neapolis. Um, and her mom really hasn't been back there in a really long time because when she started working as a um, food photographer, she just kind of left that life. But her father falls like ill in a um, you know, kind of hospice situation where it's his last days. And so Macy and her mom go to spend time with her grandpa. Um, and while you're there, um, you start to learn about uh, not only the restaurant that um, her grandfather and grandmother own, but just kind of the history of the family and how the um, great-grandfather figure, Lucky, had first immigrated from China to LA and then made his way to Last Chance. And it was a really great 
book. I hadn't read any of Lisa Yee's books in the past, um, but I've heard like really, really good things about them. And I know I had started one of them, but just not finished. But anywho, um, I really enjoyed this. I thought that there was a lot of really good character development. I loved the family history aspect as well as like little nods to actual like history and things like that. Um, and